it's time to start. Please. Good morning, St. Andrews. <laughs> Lovely to see you all in this cold day. And welcome to worship Richmond Uniting Service on the last day in July and the last Sunday in July. And uh, very, very cold. And thank you for coming to join. And a special welcome to those who join, to join us through the uh, internet, and also those who are at home and those who are unwell, and also the, those who are visiting us, our service. And uh, as you can see on the screen, that uh, today we are going to reflect on money and wealth. So we are going to start with call to worship. Call to worship, we don't have a slide, so I'm just going to read that out. Welcome to worship, trusting not in material riches, but in God and in Jesus Christ, our righteousness and the spiritual treasure. Let us worship God who puts us straight concerning the facts of life. Let us join in our prayer. May we pray. Holy God, your word is life, and we come this day seeking all that you have to offer. We thank you that you have given us your word, a source of life, peace, and salvation. Fill us with your truth and wisdom that we may dwell in the depths and the riches of your love. May nothing that we do be for naught. May our worship give glory to you and accomplish your purpose in all things. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are going to stand and sing our first hymn, Worship the Lord in the Beauty of Holiness. Let us stand and sing together.
Let me share with you a few announcements from our weekly news. New rosters has been emailed and the printouts are available on the table in the foyer. And then our programs, Open Church Tuesdays, this Tuesday, 10 a.m. And the PLT meeting, pastoral leaders team meeting Tuesday here, 7 p.m. It's changed. Normally we have 7.30, but it's been decided to have 7 p.m. So Tuesday, 7 p.m. And the Friday, intellectually disabled adult service that uh, in the church, 10.30 a.m. And advance notice that uh, our congregational meeting that was postponed will be on Sunday, 21st of August after morning service. And another one, this is the new one. I just read it out. OG Brett takes for wheelchairs and Karen, she's here, is collecting plastic bread bag tags for a charity that processed then sells them to raise money for wheelchairs in Africa. This initiative has been going for quite a while and we had collected the tags in the past. There is a jar in the foyer for the, those tags. Important only collecting plastic ones, not cardboard ones. So yeah, thank you for that. And uh, important news that was announced last night, there was uh, our zone, Hox Hoxbury zone church council gatherings using Zoom. And uh, important news is that Reverend Ann Perron, that our zone leader, she is going to conclude her ministry in the zone at the end of October and she is going to move to a new position, synod position, the mission facilitation consultant in rural area. So that she's been in our zone two years, and but that's uh, her decision, and the presbytery approved. So there will be a bit of issues and a bit of a confusion, but not directly impact our own congregation. So that was announced yesterday. And also very, very special announcement I was asked this morning. I just read it out, okay? A member of this congregation had a very special birthday finishing with zero during the week. And uh, her initials are made up of two vowels, right? I couldn't figure out and I was told. <laughs> so A and I, <laughs> right? So <laughs> that's uh, Anthea, right? So do we, happy birthday, right? All together. <laughs> birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Anthea. Happy birthday to you. Hip hip. Pray. Hip hip. Pray. Hip hip. Pray. Happy birthday, Anthea. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, this morning we come to you with thankful hearts, grateful for all that you have given us. We think of where you have placed us in the world and we know that we are safe, comfortable and free. Thank you for the Hawkesbury area. Although we've been through some tough times, these seem minor compared to the disasters of war and violence elsewhere. We are grateful to be part of the Hawkesbury Zone and we're really pleased that our group of six churches has become closer over the last few years. And we pray for the continued success of the Zone and the support that we can give each other as we can accomplish much more working together. 
We pray for your help and guidance for our church, Lord. We think of Jacon and Sung Hee as they contemplate their futures. Please go before them and prepare a place for them to continue their work. We know that you already have a plan for them, so please make a way for them and guide their decisions. We also pray for our JNC and also as they contemplate our future. Help them to make wise decisions regarding our next minister. And Father God, I would also like to pray for an end to strife in other parts of the world, places such as Afghanistan, Syria, starving people in Africa, and of course the war in Ukraine. We pray for, you, for peace to reign in these areas. We feel really helpless, Lord, being so far away, so all we really can do is pray for these tormented places. And lastly, Lord, we pray for our congregation, especially for those who we haven't seen for a long time who may not be able to attend. Be with them if at home or in hospital or wherever they may be. Give them a special blessing and sp send your Holy Spirit to surround them with love. We pray this all in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Now I invite our band to bring us the next song that the shout to the Lord. Good morning everyone. Time to warm up our voices. Let's stand and sing the good old classic shout to the Lord.
Psalm 49, verses 16 to 20. Do not be overawed when others grow rich, when the splendour of their houses increase, for they will take nothing with them when they die. Their splendour will not descend with them, though while they live they count themselves blessed. And people praise you when you prosper. They will join those who have gone down before them, who will never again see the light of see the light of life. People who have wealth but lack understanding are like the beasts that perish. And the second reading comes from Luke chapter 12 verses 13 to 21 heading the parable of the rich fool. Someone in the crowd said to him, teacher tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, man who appointed me a judge or arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, What shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, This is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we are going to see a short video clip and uh, for kids and about this one interprets the parable that uh, in American Western movie style. So slightly different, but just uh, interpret that the rich for parable in American Western movie style. So you may enjoy that.
yeah, you need a bit of uh, imagination, but <laughs> that's uh, actually the, the parable. Right, the title of this sermon is Becoming Rich in God's Sight. Jesus was known for his great wisdom. It is written in Matthew chapter 13, verse 54. When he, Jesus, had come to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said, where did this man get this wisdom? In his conversation, Jesus used ordinary language. Religious jargons were scarcely found in his vocabulary. The illustrations he gave were from common people's everyday life. Jesus was approachable. Therefore, many people came to him to ask questions or get some advice. Jesus seldom avoided answering questions or giving advice, even when the issues were tough or problematic. In Luke chapter 12, Jesus was teaching thousands of people. Unexpectedly, a man in the crowd interrupted the teaching and said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide with me the property of our father left us. The man pleaded with Jesus to help him in handling a dispute with his brother. In this instance, however, Jesus rejected the request by saying, friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Jesus showed no interest in this particular matter. Why did Jesus refuse to give the man such some support. He could have shown King Solomon's wisdom to resolve the dispute. Yet Jesus turned it down and gave a grave warning against the man's greed. Greed? Was that true? Was that man greedy? So let us look into the man's case closely. The man's father had died, and he came to Jesus to get help. Interestingly, what he wanted was not about overcoming grief or the life after death. It was about the division of the family inheritance. All this man wanted at the death of his father was the estate that his father left. In fact, he did not ask Jesus to give him advice to settle the quarrel. He just wanted Jesus to stand on his side and order his brother give up some portion of their father's estate. Jesus saw the true problem in the man's heart, greed, and harshly brushed him off. I wonder if we Christians sometimes approach God with this unnamed man's attitude. All we want from God is money, property, promotion, or success in this life. We are sure that Jesus stands on our side and ask him to order others to give up some of their opportunities or assets. I wonder what Jesus would say in response to our heart's desire. I have heard about a Christian man 
who has not spoken to his brother for 20 years because of a dispute over a will. I have also heard a group of siblings hire lawyers and squabble for years over the terms of their parents' will. In the end, not much was left which was not given to their lawyers. How sad and ironic that the goods that the parents accumulated over their lifetime have become, after their death, the reason for the disintegration of their family. Jesus said, take care, protect yourself against the least bit of greed, life is not defined by what you have even when you have a lot. In Luke's Gospel, Jesus gave an interesting illustration after warning against the man's greed. And this illustration is generally named the rich fool. It is a parable about a spectacularly successful farmer who prudently built large barns to hold all of his crops. He was satisfied with his financial situation. His future was safe and secure. Jesus told this story to show an example of greedy people. Jesus said that God called him a fool, but was he really a fool? The Bible text does not imply that the rich man did something wrong to make money. The man did not exploit or swindle others to become rich. He might have worked hard day and night to save money. He was able to buy a good farm and it produced good crops. Finally, he was able to enjoy a good and happy life. He sat back and said to himself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. This farmer's lifestyle is a goal of many people in our society. They work hard to increase their wealth and improve their lifestyle and to find more ways to enjoy themselves. They try hard to store up more money and positions so that they can enjoy themselves in their later years. They are always planning for the future by making good investments in stock, insurance, property, superannuation, and even lottery tickets. Luke chapter 12, however, rings an alarm bell. It says that there could be a serious problem in this lifestyle. You may wonder why. As a matter of fact, the rich farmer missed some important things in planning his life. He just concentrated on himself and did not consider his families, relatives, friends, or neighbors. There was no God in his life. He did not recognize what God gave to him, a good farm, good weather, abundant harvest, his health, and all other things he had. He was thankful neither to his families nor to God. Moreover, the rich man made plans only for this life, not what comes after. Finally, he achieved what he had yearned 
and the stride of four, and now she could enjoy a relaxing lifestyle. But God suddenly turned up and said to him, You fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get it all? It did not matter how much she might accumulate. He could not take it with him when he died. As you know, shrouds don't have pockets. So there is no need to envy him. It is written in Psalm 49, verses 16 to 17. Don't let it bother you when others get rich and live in luxury. Soon they will die, and all of their wealth will be left behind. I have heard about a man who spent his whole life building a little business from scratch, building it up into a thriving company. But after his death, his three children got into such a fight over how to dispose his estate that the business was dissolved, assets sold, with nothing left. How sad that the company, the father thought he would pass on to his children, became, after his death, the death of his family. In the eyes of many men and women, the rich farmer was wise and successful. In the eyes of God, however, he was a fool and a failure. He had the things that money could buy, but he lost the things that money could not buy, particularly eternal life. We wonder what happened to his children after his death. There are parents whose, whose legacy to their children is deep faith, a good character, sound values, and a love for the Lord. For example, Patrick Handy wrote in his will, this is all the inheritance I give to my dear family. The religion of Christ will give them one which will make them rich indeed. Sadly, however, the only things the greed, greedy farmer left his children were the materials of this world. And apparently, the children had learned their father's lessons well. At the, at the father's death, all they were thinking about was how to get more of their father's estate. So there could have been serious disagreement amongst them. One of them might have approached Jesus to get advice. Nevertheless, Jesus had no interest in children's squabble over the division of their parents' legacy. In fact, it did not really matter how to divide the legacy. They would only possess, hold, and fill up their earthly bonds. They would not contribute anything to God's kingdom. So let us remember, the Bible does not condemn money. It is neutral. We all store up some money and other things for a rainy day. It is better to save more. There is nothing wrong with being wealthy. It is a gift from God. The problem is not money itself. It is the love of money. Paul said, the love of money is a serious source of all kinds of evil. We human beings can easily slip into the love of money and give higher priority to it than God 
and his will. Money looks promising. It looks like a guarantee for our future security. That is why most of our day is consumed with making, accumulating, and managing money and worldly things. Jesus didn't condemn people for eating, drinking, being merry, nor even for being rich. Jesus condemns those who are not rich in God's sight and those who live for themselves, not for God. God wants us to enjoy life, but not without close relationship with him. Therefore, we are to keep our minds fixed on things up there, not on things here on earth. The rich farmer was called a fool not because he was rich, but because he built bigger vans and hoarded everything for himself. He was a fool because he forgot what was really important in this life and in the life to come. Jesus advised us to shift our focus from worldly materialistic things to the things of God and use our worldly wealth to be rich in God's sight. We have not arrived at this place of worship thinking that here we would receive a program on how to make ourselves healthy and wealthy on top of faith and salvation. Sadly, some Christian leaders try to make Jesus to do such things, investment consultant, health advisor, or even a fortune teller. Today's Bible text tells us that Jesus does not have any interest in such things. Jesus asked us to seek the kingdom of God. Then all other things shall be added to us. We have come here to be with Jesus. We have come here because we love him. On this cold winter Sunday morning, lots of people are at nice places, comfortable places. But we come here or at home, join that to worship God. You have made a special effort to listen to what Jesus has to say. We've been willing to listen, to change our life, or to take a risk if we have to. As we focus on God's words and try to be rich in God's sight, God will give us abundant blessings to be rich in human sight as well. God is the source of all blessings. May we pray. Lord God, all that we are and all that we have come as a gift from you, our lives, families, talents, money, properties, and all else. Yet we tend to treat our gifts as our possessions. We grab and grasp Hold and hold. Gracious God, awaken us to realize where they have come from and to be aware of what is important in life. Help us to put things in their proper perspective and priority, to see ourselves as your gifts, and to cling to the things that last rather than the things that pass away. Give us faith and courage to give you what is yours. Help us to be rich 
in your sight first. We pray in the name of Jesus, the source of all blessings. Amen. Now we are going to stand and sing and the next song, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. And our band is going to lead us. Give offering to God with a thankful heart. So let us see this as a moment of a great opportunity to share in God's work. So your offering will be bring to the Lord.
May we pray. Generous Father, you have taught us how to trust your goodness and lay up treasure in heaven. We offer you gifts in response to your word. We bring you a portion what our labor has gained in thankful praise for the abundance we have. We give you our souls in humble obedience, for in Christ we inherit eternal life. Be pleased with our offerings, for they are signs of your mercy and grace that we have received through Christ our Lord. We pray in his name. Amen. And now we are going to sing a bit old, but appropriate for today, Count Your Blessings. So let us stand and sing together. Thank you, please be seated. Thank you for joining this service. And uh, so now July is nearly over. So hope that August is warmer and the spring is approaching. So that maybe next week we may join 
with the warmth of the weather and the warmth of God. So we are going to finish service, commissioning, and benediction on the screen. Go in peace. May God bless you with every blessing that you may be a blessing to others. May he wear our hearts with love and direct our footsteps with compassion. And may he open your arms to others and cause you to speak with kindness and wisdom and so make you more like Christ this day and forevermore. Amen. We are going to remain seated and sing next one, sound clip, now unto him. I think this is the first time. And the sound clip, but it starts a bit slow, right? So that, uh, yeah, we finish worship and now unto him. Thank you.